Welcome to the Limitless Ladies in Leadership podcast. I am your host, Danielle, and I've created a space for the many powerful, creative, and limitless female leaders to share their stories. From female CEOs to professional athletes and doctors, every powerful woman has a story to tell. There's no guarantee where this podcast will take us, so welcome to the unfiltered, unedited, and badass space for all women to align. Let's get started. So on the phone with me today is Erin Nane. Erin is an accomplished business owner and soon-to-be mom of four who started her entrepreneurial journey at the young age of 21. She grew a small business and turned it into a successful multi-location seven-figure company. Erin is passionate about empowering women and entrepreneurs alike to tap into their power to accomplish their dreams as well as break down barriers to design a life they love. Erin owns three eye tan, sun, and spray salons as well as the Centabella Med Spa. Welcome, Erin. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Oh my God. When I hear about mom, like mom period and business <laughs> owner, but mom of multiple children. So I can't wait to dive into this story and, uh, you know, really hear what you have to share. Yeah. So one of the first things I like to do before the interview is ask my guests what their personal definition of the word limitless is. So what's yours? Um, I mean, I guess it would be a little cliche to say having no limits, but I truly believe that. Um, Starting my journey, I was told that I wouldn't accomplish anything. I wouldn't make it. And so I was determined from the beginning to prove to myself that there were no limits for whatever I want in life. I can accomplish it. It is attainable. And um, you can make whatever you want to make happen, whatever that looks like for you. I love it. Thank you. And we mentioned too that you started your journey at the young age of 21. I That's crazy. Congrats. Uh, but I really want to know what life was like before this. Like, were you in school? Did you know you were going to be a business owner? Um, no, I actually didn't. So life looked quite different. I was um, in college and had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, a career, I took a career path and was like, oh, well, this will basically make me the same amount of money that I'm going to school for, if not more. So um, I was really, I guess you could say like career focused. I was ready, you know, to jump into that world. So I took a plunge and I left school and then um, I went ahead and jumped full into that career. A couple years into it, I realized that the windowless office getting off when the sun is going down pushing papers around and not having that face-to-face contact with people that i love so much wasn't for me but if that's not for me what is it's it's so hard to figure out like what's your passion what should i do and you know everybody thinks that that you know just comes to you one day and it, it truly doesn't so um it's interesting how it all worked out but from that corporate life that i thought was for me and realizing it wasn't what kind of transitioned me into all of a sudden thinking that, you know, this business journey was for me. And that's kind of what led me into my next step. Awesome. So just a little backstory. Did you grow up in a household of business owners at all? Absolutely not. Um, I grew up in a house with a um, single mom of three who was very driven, very hardworking and um, taught me from a young age that everything I want to make happen, I can. It's going to take work. It's going to take some figuring out, but there is no limit. And so she really set the foundation for me to just have this mindset that things are attainable. I, whatever it looks like to me, my dreams are, can be become a reality. Um, but no, so it was very interesting when I did take this path, my not coming from a family of entrepreneurs, especially in a time when entrepreneurship was not the thing like it is today. Um, it definitely caused for some opposition. Yeah, I bet. I bet there was some fear, but also like good for you because I hear this time and time again that, you know, even in myself, I hear my own self saying, well, you know, my, my parents weren't business owners and they were just kind of the white collar, whatever. So it, I guess it's not my path. And then <laughs> more and more, not only am I discovering my own life, but hearing from other people, I'm realizing that we can change that at any point in our lives. Absolutely. Just like we can change anything else, same thing. I definitely agree with what you said. We can definitely make that change. So what was your major in college, by the way? (laughs) Um, When I tell you I had no idea what I wanted to do, I had no idea. Um, 
so, I mean, at a younger age, I definitely had an entrepreneurial spirit. And then going um, into college, I toyed with, at the time when I left, I thought I was going to become a nurse. <laughs> I laughed because I could never see myself doing that. Um, and so it's, it's interesting how you just think that, you know, oh, well, let's try this. So um, that's the path I thought I was going down. <laughs> I love it. And another little nugget for people to take that, you know, just because they have a certain major in college or maybe they switch majors five times that that doesn't necessarily <laughs> define what the future is going to look like. Right. I mean, at that age, you're still figuring out what makes you thrive and what makes you, you know, really jump out of your skin. And so I think that at that time, it just wasn't clear to me. And so I just figured, okay, well, that's a great career path. It's not going anywhere. Might as well do that. So yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So you mentioned a little earlier that things don't necessarily just come to people. They don't just like fall into their lap. So I want to hear about some of the time that you spent creating a business idea and and was the ITAN concept your first idea or did it kind of lead to that later? Um, So actually how it worked out is I was preparing to turn 21, walked into a tanning salon and was like, Ooh, I really like this. I like the way that it makes people feel. I like the vibe, the music, the girls. Um, It just, I like the feeling I got. And so after that day I um, left and I called my mom and I said, Hey, I think I, I think I want to open a tanning salon. <laughs> I don't know anything about business. I, that was my first time ever tanning. Um, and so I literally dove head in into the tanning industry. And from that phone call, I would say 45 days later, I was opening my first business. So it's very, it's, <laughs> it's very crazy. It's not, it's, I just had someone the other day ask me, um, why tanning? And I said, there was absolutely no logic behind it. But I guess that was the beauty of me being, you know, almost 21 is that, you know, I just, I, it felt good. It, it seemed like what I wanted to do. I got to work with people and I got to, um, really just tap into making people feel their best. And for me, that was the answer to it all. So, um, that crazy path led me to the tanning industry. Um, and so from there you realize that, you know, everybody's business name on the outside may look different, but the inside of business and what it takes to run a business and all the logistics that go into it are actually pretty similar. So, um, yeah, it was definitely not something that was necessarily planned, but, um, yeah. I hear this over and over and over again. That people, you know, they, they had one plan and it went another way and they had another plan and it didn't happen. And, you know, then someday they just kind of fall into something and they realize, oh, I have a passion in this and they end up creating a business and it's amazing. Right. Yeah. So how does a 21 year old who's what you were still in college or graduating college or whatever, how do you, how do you even start owning a business? Like, how does that even begin for you or your story of it? Um, so for me, it's very unlike probably what you would think it would be. Um, and even today I laugh at it because if it wasn't for the fact that I was so young, Mm -hmm. I probably would have never done what I did because I just, you know, I just don't think the same, but, um, so I was, I had left college. I was in my corporate career and I had purchased my first house, um, a year prior to that. And so, um, looking into, you know, I had no idea what it's going to take at the time I was purchasing into a franchise different than I can, but another franchise. And so I, you know, inquired, asked for more information, found out what it was going to cost, did all of that. And basically took every single penny out of my house, um, to finance my business. And it's crazy. I don't think I would tell anybody to ever do that or myself do that again. (laughs) Um, But that's how I got started. I had no business owning a business. I was not financially prepared. I was not mentally prepared. Um, But I was driven, motivated, and determined to succeed. And that's basically what got me sitting here talking to you today. Wow. Okay. So uh, let's throw another wrench in this mix. Mom of four. Holy crap. Um, So (laughs) first of all, when you, like, like, which came first? Were you pregnant with your first or second child before the whole, you know, investing in the company and starting it? Or was that after? No. So no children at the time. Um, 
super motivated, couldn't wait, just on fire to get this started. And six months after opening my first business, I find out that I'm pregnant. Wow. And I think for a, yeah. And I think for a woman, especially is I always knew I wanted to have children. Um, but at that time it was, it was a blow, right? It's like, I am just getting this dream off the ground. And when you start anything new, especially a business, I mean, I'm working open to close seven days a week. I'm doing whatever it takes to really learn my business, make my business um, successful, keep the doors open. So um, it was a hard thing to deal with at the time because not only am I going to be a first time mom and figuring out how to navigate that, but then you have to deal with, you know, now I don't feel like a hundred percent. I don't feel good every morning, but I still have to show up being a business owner I don't, I don't have a sick day. There is no days where I can be off my A game. So um, it's interesting how all that works out though, because I think that was quick lessons that, hey, life is going to happen regardless and you're gonna get thrown all these different ways, but it doesn't matter. You still have to show up as your best self every single day, regardless of being a first time mom, becoming pregnant, whatever's going on at home, it still required me to give 101% every day. So. No, I was not a mom when I got started, quickly became one, and then actually quickly became a mom of three. Um, and so kind of learned how to juggle and handle that while still, you know, really going after what I set out to do. I mentioned you were a mom of four. I guess I was incorrect in that. It's three. No, no, you're right. I am. Um, I'm currently pregnant. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Dang. So yeah. I, what I love about this whole story is like, I even catch myself and I don't have any children and I catch myself saying, I don't have time. I don't have energy. I don't have, you know, when new business ideas come up. And then I hear from people like you <laughs> that are like, yeah, I was like going to college, got pregnant, had this, invested in a business, didn't know what I was doing, blah, 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 blah. And I'm here, you know, and successful. So congrats. Thank you. But don't, I mean, I'm not, I, I have no, everything that you said, I have no energy. There's a million things I would love to be doing or think that I should be doing better. Um, so we're all in the same boat. So yeah, definitely feel you on that. <laughs> so what was the first ITAN location that you purchased? Um, so the first business started off in Santee, um, opened 15 years ago. And that was the first. And then from Santee was, um, it wasn't for about seven years later, we expanded to a new location in Carmel Mountain. Mm -hmm. And then um, after Carmel Mountain, we opened the med spa. And then, um, yeah. And then most recently in November, we per, um, purchased I-10 Hillcrest. So that rounded up our four. Oh my God. That's so amazing. Uh, so yeah. you said that the, um, the second and further locations happened. What it was, how much longer after the first one? I want to say about seven years so, between okay. the first opening up the second opened. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So, okay. Santa Bella, I actually didn't know about this. I'm, I'm one of your clients at ITAN, but I didn't know about Santa Bella. So what is that? Huh. And, um, what are some of the surfaces, the services that you offer? Um, so Sensible is a med spa. A medical spa is um, a place that you can go and get Botox, laser hair removal. Um, we do skin treatments, body treatments, um, lasers, all sorts of stuff. So med spa is like the new concept of pampering yourself, making yourself feel your best, but adding some medical aspects into it that can only be performed by a doctor or nurse. And then other services that like a normal spa would have is facials and peels and massages and all that fun stuff. That's amazing. And what yes. comes to mind during all this too is like, we're also talking about the past 12 plus months, we have been in COVID times. So what a crazy time to be a business owner. What were some of the things that you kind of went through during that? <laughs> um, being in business for 15 years, I've definitely been through a lot. I mean, my first test of business was the 2008 economic downfall. Um, it was, you know, a recession. People weren't, I'm in the service type industry. So people weren't doing things for themselves. They're not essential things anymore. So that was my first test of showing me like what a difference a change in economy or, or a change in, you know, what's going on in the world can have. Um, then, then you have something like COVID, something you, we never would have imagined we would have ever seen in our lifetime. And so it was a very, very, very scary time because 
unlike in the economic downfall, there was, I could still have my doors open. I could still have clients. I could still try to figure out and maneuver how to get through a decline in business. This was being told that my doors could not be open, but when the lights go out, the expenses don't stop. Mm -hmm. So just because I couldn't have my doors open, that meant there was no change to my expenses, my business expenses. I didn't have a single landlord that worked with us. Um, there was no, I mean, yeah, there's, you know, paycheck protection, but really that helped us get our doors back open and be able to have, you know, so I'm very grateful for that. So, um, it was a very, very challenging time. I think that, um, hit different industries differently. Obviously some businesses were able to, you know, do better than they ever have. And some smaller businesses like my own or service type businesses that, were kind of targeted as, you know, in-person services have to all cease, really just took such a hit. And so for me, it was, um, how do I stay strong? How do I stay motivated? How do I not forget why I got started? Mm. And really reminding myself of um, prior times. I've been through hard times before um, with really the, the 2008 situation standing out mostly in my mind because at that time that was like a struggle whether businesses were same type of climate businesses were, you know, just closing by the dozens. And so I had to remind myself that just like those times, this is no different. You've been through hard times. You can get through them. It might take some creativity. It might take you shifting and pivoting. Um, but we can make it through and just having that, that strength, that determination to keep pushing, even when it seems like everything is so dark and dim. So uh, we're still here. So happy to say, cause in the beginning of this, I, I would have honestly told you, I, I, I don't know. I don't know how we're supposed to still be here. Um, you know, with the restrictions that were put on us all. So definitely a challenging time. Um, but I do believe that every challenge is just going to provide you with so much growth and opportunity and, um, and it has. So taking the lessons and the growth and the opportunities from it and, and really just, you know, building from there. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing that because I know, you know, on the outside, it can look, you know, from a consumer's perspective, like, oh yeah, you know, you don't know all the details and it probably sucks. There's a little bit of a decline, but we don't really see all of the details and we don't really see all of the struggles, especially when you guys are so good at like keeping a positive atmosphere and, and, you know, keeping this sort of reputation up. We don't see all of those struggles. And so I think it's really easy for us to ignore them. Yeah. And that's honestly one thing I wish could have been shown a little bit more just because, I mean, small businesses are the foundation of most of our communities and cities. And a lot of people don't, they see a name or a sign and they just assume that it's some big company or they don't understand the face behind it. And it's like, you know, my family, my livelihood, my blood, sweat and tears, everything I, every part of me, you know, goes into those businesses. And so it's just a very different, you know, it just hits you a different way. But um, our our guests have been so supportive and so sweet, even though, you know, most of them don't have a clue, but um, I'm just glad that we're able to still be here and to serve our community. And it just, it's a year later, it's definitely relieving that I'm able to still talk to you and not have a different story. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very grateful for that as well. And I like just going back to what you had said about like the service type stuff. I have worked in sales in relation to restaurants for quite some time now. And I got to see the shift that restaurants had because a lot of them ended up turning to catering or they ended up turning to private events or private chef things or, you know, whatever it was or takeout delivery, whatever they had to shift too. But the thing was they had other options. Like they could bring food to people. You can't exactly bring tanning beds to people. (laughs) Yeah. And it was interesting. I was recently asked, how did I pivot it? And I can think of a million ways of how I pivoted mentally or what I did differently with this time that I've never had before. But as far as how do I pivot my business, my business is an in-person business. There was no pivot options. Yes, I could sell products online or you would see some of your, you know, hairstylists uh, hairstylists selling um, color kits. And um, yes, we could sell sell skincare products, but it's like, that's that's not going to pay your rent. That's not going to get you very far. So um, that was the hardest thing for me is that 
there wasn't re- there wasn't really any option. There wasn't a way. And so with my hands tied, it was frustrating because it, it was really out of my control. So yeah, I, that's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, was there ever a point where you seriously considered just giving it up and quitting? There was. Um, so back in 2008, I we were struggling, same type of, you know, climate. All the businesses around me have had gone out of business. My landlord was working with me. And um, I remember it like it was yesterday. One day I received a three day notice to pay rent or quit. And it was to my shock because at the time I was like, I have zero resources left. And not only do I have zero resources, but my landlord promised that he was working with me and understood. And that night I remember driving away and I I looked at the neon sign in my business in my rear view. And I remember thinking like, I'm never going to come back here again. Like, and I I told my mom, I said, you know what? I, I had fought so much up until that point. I'd exhausted all my financial resources I had poured in. I had done everything I knew I possibly could while having people around me tell me that one, not only should I have not started, but two, this is what we were talking about. This is what we meant. And so um, you start hearing those things and believing them to be true or thinking, you know what, they were right or seeing things happen and believing that, you know, that's probably a sign that, you know, this three-day notice, even though he was working with me, it's probably a sign that this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. And my mom reassured me that that wasn't it. And I couldn't be more thankful from it because from that day forward, I've never, ever, ever, ever had a thought again that it was about giving up. All those signs that people, you know, that you're looking for or the people who are in your, you know, ear telling you that it's not the right thing or maybe you should look elsewhere. It's like, you, you can't hear the noise. You mm-hmm. can't. And the, you're going to feel it. You're going to, it's going to feel heavy. It's going to feel like the right thing to do is to give up, but it's not. And, um, if I would have given up that day, we wouldn't be sitting here today. I don't know. You know, my life would look really different, yeah. but it was crazy how not giving up. Like I said before, there's always opportunities and growth and challenges and I turned that corner and a big opportunity came to me and it totally changed the climate. So um, never giving up despite giving every reason to has definitely been a big part of my secret sauce. Yeah. And I mean, I can even say that on a level of um, being an employee. You know, I remember in my 20s, I got fired from my first job. Not my first. It was the first time I was fired from a job. And I remember like this brief moment of like well forget it like I guess I'm just this terrible person and I'll never be able to like do anything you know all this self beat up and whatever and it was funny because at the time when I was in all this self-pity I didn't really see what other options were I was like well I don't have much of a resume I don't have this going for me I got bills I got whatever you know and I don't remember how long I stayed in that pity but (laughs) I was shopping at a place one day and uh the owner came up to me and was like, Hey, so, you know, we see you around here a lot. Are you interested in a job? And I was like, yeah. And he didn't even know my situation. And, um, it was not only almost double the pay per hour, but it included a 401k. It included full health benefits, like an actual job, not, not just, you know, a small little here and there kind of job, which no shame to those. Cause I think we've all been there, but it was, yeah. <laughs> it was just like, Oh, and that completely turned my world around. And I think, you know, not that I've been the best at practicing this all the time, but what I'm learning to realize is that the things that are out of our control, it it doesn't do any good for us to really sit in that for too long or get upset about that for too long or play the victim and poor me, this happened to me. Yeah, it still sucks, but really taking ownership of that and moving forward and being like, okay, so what's next? Like, I don't get to just Mm -hmm. sit here and do nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think realizing for me, I'm such a planner. I'm such a, you know, I have this idea and vision of how my life should go and what should unfold next that when it doesn't happen that way, I'm, I used to get so down thinking that, gosh, it's not going how I want or whatever. And it's crazy to look back and see that the things that didn't work out for me always took me to a better place. And so that control that we want so bad, I've learned to let go a little bit. Because in those times, it's like, wow, if I would have stayed on that road, I would have been here. But that 
road that I didn't want to be on actually took me here. So I often remind myself of that when it feels like messy or hard that we're not in control. Uh, it's definitely taking us to a better just destination for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when your intent is good and you got good support around you and you know, there's other factors as well, but it's definitely a mindset. I've realized that as well. Yeah. I am curious though, when your doors were closed during 2008 and then again during, you know, on and off during these COVID times, was that an opportunity for you to just spend some more time with your family and really be there f- for them more than maybe you were able to before? Or did you start seeking out, you know, new business options or like going through your head what you were going to do next? Like, what did that look like for you? Um, so this was the first time our business is, has ever had to close before the business just drastically declined. So this was very, very different. So, um, I basically took the time to, yeah, we got some time together more as a family. Um, And then I really dove into, I was able to dive into my passion a little bit more, which is um, really just, I I love empowering other women. I love, you know, just being around women who are driven and who are really just going after it and just encouraging them. And so um, at the time, I launched a blog kind of just sharing my story, what I've been through, tips and tricks of what I have, and really just engaging and connecting with other women who are, you know, really trying to give it their all as well. Oh, that's awesome. We'll have to list your blog yeah. in the uh, description of this, too, because I would love to check that out. And I'm sure other people are curious as well. Yeah. So how much time now, like, on a daily basis, on average, do you spend physically in the salons? So it's interesting how things shift a little bit. So I went from uh, all my time in the business to shifting more of working on the business, not in my business. Mm -hmm. So um, now it looks like I'm probably inside the business actually for, I don't know, average of four hours a week, very low. Um, but there's a 12 hour, 10 hour, eight hour, six hour work day on any given day, um, working on the business and all the logistics that go into it. Um, I work right hands with all my leaders. And so we spend a lot of time together and then they're in the business and uh, rolling out and putting everything that we're working on into fruition. Um, so it really just depends on, you know, what's going on and what I'm currently working on. If I'm uh, working on a new location, um, then you're definitely going to see me in there all day, every day. If we're working on a new project, I am currently working on a project. So it takes a lot of time with meetings and all other sorts of things that, you know, you'll, will see me in there less. So it definitely fluctuates, but, um, I'm at a time where I'm working on the business more than ever, but, um, without me physically being in it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I guess maybe one of the good things about COVID is that it's become kind of the new thing to work from home or do a lot of stuff from home. So it's a lot more acceptable too. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned women and women business owners and holding each other up. I I love this. And this is obviously like a path I'm on right now too. In your experience, how can we better recognize women, small business owners and support each other and just really like raise each other up in this? I think just coming together and realizing that there is no competition. Your only competition is yourself. And as cliche as it sounds, it's absolutely the truth. Our goal should be to get better every single day and to be working on ourselves to be the best that we possibly can. So that would definitely be my number one is we can all be such advocates for each other. We can be such huge supporters and motivators and um, really just rely on each other for support, regardless of what we do as well. So Um, you may be in this type of industry. I may be in this type of industry. We all have the same goals. We're all working towards the same thing. And so regardless of our industry or what we do, we have so much in common, whether that's, um, you know, just being a woman in general or being a, you know, a mom or whatever that looks like, um, that it doesn't matter the industry. It doesn't matter the level. It doesn't matter for me. I love women in general, as far as like, I don't even like non-business owner or not. So um, I just think there's so much support, motivation and inspiration we can provide to each other on so many levels by just coming together and, you know, banding as one. Yeah, I love that. And that was something that I really, 
had to have a lot of practice in. I think, you know, I grew up a major tomboy. I still am. I was kind of that person that didn't trust women. I felt everyone was catty. I didn't really find myself liking a lot of the same things women did. And I, so I would hold this resentment. And I was always that person that would say, I don't have women friends. You know, all my friends are guys, you know. <laughs> and I started realizing that like having that support system, being able to both give and take and, uh, or borrow or whatever you want to call it, that it's it's been so amazing. Cause like you said, it doesn't have to be a competition. Like I can ha- be a business owner. You can be a business owner. In fact, we could both own restaurants right next to each other and we don't have to compete against each other. We can still support each other because we both offer something different for people. Absolutely. And what we offer is so different. So that's why like business owner or not, you know, like you said, same type of, it doesn't matter. It's that we're all going to shine differently and we all have so much to bring to the table. You may be, you know, a, a great at this. I'm going to be great at this together. We can put those together and really share those and become even better together. I love it. And this is my biggest motivation for this podcast. (laughs) (laughs) I Um, love that. (laughs) So as I had mentioned earlier, I've been going to ITAN for a little bit and I, the Carmel mountain location is mine. It's very close to me. Um, but not mine, obviously, but you know, (laughs) it's the one I frequent. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, One of the things that always stood out to me was that most of the time, other than like a short period of time, your entire staff has been all women. So do you have any advice on managing women or keeping that positive atmosphere and, um, you know, handling disputes, stuff that like can be common amongst women. So, um, yeah, I've employed about 99.9% women for the last 15 years. And over that time span, I've really just tapped into us being a sisterhood. And that's, you know, my, what I tell my team is you're part of my family. When you're on my team, you're part of my family. You're an extension of me. You're, you represent what I stand for every day. And you're so important to me and the businesses on a whole different level. And so what I try to, um, you know, really teach the girls is that there's no competition. Like we just talked about, everybody stands out for different reasons. So you may be on the team and be really great at this. And she may be really great at this. But without all those different things, we wouldn't be great as one. And so everyone realizing that everyone's going to come in at a different level with a different background, with different traits, but that together as a team, that's what makes us strong is the differences that we have with each other. So um, I really talk about a sisterhood and really just coming together on so many levels. You don't have to be best friends and there's going to be some people that you click with more than others. But if we recognize how great we are individually and just appreciate that, um, then it really gives just a different appreciation. And I've been, yeah, there's always things here and there, but I've just been so fortunate to ha- always have such, you know, it goes in waves, but always such great teams that care so much about <clears throat> showing up and being their best that they really do come together and end up loving each other. So, um, yeah, I just really try to pass on everything that I stand for, everything that I learned thus far, everything that I'm currently learning. And I really just try to give that to my team and help them feel the energy of, you know, how much I love, you know, them and how much I love, you know, them becoming their best and becoming their best as a team. Yeah. And I mean, I just really want to take the time to commend you on that too, because before I reached out to you. I mean, the biggest reason I reached out to you is because of my positive experience at the salon. And I have known some of these girls like Ali sticks out to me. I've known her for, I don't know, four years now. And she's bounced around a few times. And, you know, there's a few other girls that I've, I've known there. And every single time, like without a doubt, there has been a positive atmosphere. They have talked positively about you. When I asked them a little bit about you to see if I could get you on the podcast, everyone was just so supportive and so uplifting Mm -hmm. and there was no negativity. And I was just like, wow, like this is what I want in my life. Like this is something, these are the women that I want to stick with, you know? And so I just want to really commend you on that. Thank you. And yeah, Allie's a rock star. She's currently at Centibel Med Spa, so you can go see her there. Um, But yeah, it's hard. I mean, finding good people is hard and finding people who um, I feel like I try really hard. And, you know, sometimes people may see that and people may not. But 
I try to be really genuine and transparent and just hopefully, you know, me showing up as myself and them seeing that, I hope that that translates. So to hear that feedback means more than you ever know, because it's really what I wake up and try to do every single day. But you, you know, you can try as hard as you want. It doesn't mean it's necessarily happening. So um, thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so advice again, what sort of advice would you recommend to maybe women that are listening right now who are interested in starting their own business? So uh, a couple different things I would say, um, but I would definitely say that you can do it. A lot of times our biggest block is ourselves. We're going to be able to find a hundred and one reasons why we can't do it, shouldn't do it. Everything is going to feel like we can't, but you can prove yourself wrong. Um, I would definitely also on the other flip side of that say it's a lot of work. And I'll be real honest with people um, when they're thinking about starting a business or want to start a business because it's not for everybody. And right now the entrepreneurial climate is so strong. And so that's why I like to make clear is that you can be a boss, babe. You can be a magnificent woman and not own a business. <laughs> so, um, but if you feel that that is your path, I, I do talk to you seriously about the type of work that you're going to be putting in. And it does look a lot more glamorous on the outside than <laughs> it is. It's a 24 seven job. Are you ready for that? Mm -hmm. um, and then really just making a plan. What do you want to do? How do you um, go from that idea? And how do you become the best at that? Um, really mapping that out and then figuring out how to go through your next steps. So first and foremost, I believe that we all have the power to make it happen, whatever that looks like for you. Some people that's going to look different. Some people it's going to be business. Some people it's going to be career. Some people it's going to be, you know, being the PTA president, but whatever that looks like for you, figuring out how do you become your best at that? And then how do you show up as your best self every single day? So my biggest um, advice would be to pour everything into what you're trying to do. And part of that pouring in is investing in yourself more than you ever have because it's going to be hard. So you have to you have to be so strong that you aren't going to quit. You have to be so confident in yourself that when things all hit the fan, you can keep going. You have to have a plan so strong that when you don't have the support or your friends don't understand what you're going through, um, your plan is so steady, you can keep moving forward. So it's all possible. It's all within reach. Don't be the person that's holding you back. Don't be your own road roadblock, but definitely, you know, pour into everything and every aspect, including yourself, including mapping out your plan and, and definitely go for it. You, you have the capability to make it happen. I love it. And I just, I keep hearing these, um, words of wisdom coming from like perseverance and not giving up and just really like believing in yourself and even with me, like one of the areas that I have a lot of focus on is diet, exercise, nutrition, fitness, and in a whole. And I committed myself to one of the biggest competitions I've ever done. It's later this year. And, and in the beginning, you know, I signed up for it and um, I told a couple people and they were like, what? Like, you're doing, like, this is crazy. You've never done anything this big. And I said, I know that's exactly why I'm doing it because it was something that I felt that I had outgrown a lot of other goals. And so it was time to move on to something that was at the time unattainable just so that I could prove that I could do it later. <laughs> yes, I love that. Yeah, I'm really excited. I'm terrified, but I'm I'm really excited. <laughs> no, good for you. I love that. It makes me so happy to hear. Thank you. So I feel like a person like you has always got some sort of goals going on. So in the moment, do you have any other current goals for opening another salon location or maybe even venturing out into another business? I absolutely, I always have goals and it's crazy how they're forever changing and getting bigger and looking different. Um, so, I mean, if you would have asked me this question, maybe even like five years ago, I would have been absolutely bring on all the locations that was just, you know, my bigger picture. Um, and now I have realized that what I love about it is I love being so connected to my teams. I love being, I love being so involved. I love, you know, going into the salons and the clients knowing me by name and, um, so yes, I do want to expand eventually when we're ready. And, um, but my expansion doesn't look as big as it, it once was. Yeah, It's definitely on a smaller scale because I realized what I love about it could be taken away if I go too fast mm -hmm. or if I go too big. And so that's been a moment of clarity. Definitely. Um, 
you know, over the last year or two that I really got clearer on is that I want to do fewer things better. And part of that Mm. is, you know, expanding, but, um, you know, doing that on a smaller scale. And the other thing maybe worth mentioning is you asked about other businesses a long or a while ago, you know, we tanning salons, med spa. And so we kind of had that, there was different interests that we had. And so we would kind of branch out to accomplish all those different interests. And I realized that it's not for me. Um, just because I like to focus and do things really well. And part of being able to do that is having a laser focus on what you're doing. And so when you're branched out too many ways or when you're spread too thin, how can you really give your best to something? And so definitely keeping a focus on the two areas that we are um, is definitely a goal and definitely growth. And part of that growth looks like I want to grow my teams to be better than they are today. I want to grow my leadership team more. And um, when we're ready, I would love to add location number five. Yeah. Well, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see when that happens. Um, One thing actually I was just thinking about was uh, something, you know, we often overlook as well. But inside the tanning salon, you also have a small store with tanning lotions and other products in there. Is there any sort of like guideline that you've followed as far as like which brands you were going to use or like how does that kind of come together? Yeah, so I'm, um, you know, med spa, all of that. I'm a huge advocate on doing uh, basically figuring out like what's the best. I'm a consumer myself. I'm a woman. It's like, what do I want? And I really focus on. Um, not so much like what I personally like, because, you know, what you like and my, what I may like may be totally different. So if I just have a store full of everything I like, I'm only going to have, you know, certain things, but really figuring out what's like, what quality standards do I have? Mm-hmm. How, what do I look for? And, you know, I want to make sure results that products are results driven. I want to make sure that they're coming from a, you know, high standard um, ingredient. So I look for as far as that goes, like, what would I look for? What do I look for? What would I want to see, you know, from really like a, a quality aspect. And then I branch out and find those companies that represent that, um, test everything, get my teams involved in testing it, get their feedback. Um, that's essentially how we get to figure out what you get to choose from. (laughs) Yeah. And if I remember correctly, you have, uh, your lines of lotions and things at the tanning salons are cruelty free too, right? Yeah. So, um, companies that we work with are cruelty free, not tested on animals, um, things like that. And definitely as skincare progresses and, you know, the market changes, we're definitely always looking how to stay innovative on that. Like we just introduced an organic spray tan and really just finding ways to, um, provide the best that we can for everyone. Yeah. I, I love that aspect. Cause I remember a while ago, I mean, this was years ago that I hadn't purchased a tanning lotion for a little bit because the one that I had looked up was testing on animals. And that was a little, that was a really big thing for me. That was like, well, I don't want to contribute to this. And then it was actually Allie again at one point. She's like, Hey, Danielle, I have some really good news. Like uh, now all of the (laughs) products are cruelty free. I'm like, what? Like, this is so cool. (laughs) Yeah. It's awesome. I love it. So where can people find out more about you personally or the salons? Um, so ITAN, ITAN.com is where you can find the ITAN Scent Spray Spa location. Santa Bella Med Spa, so S E N T E Bella Spa.com is where you can find out more information about that. And then to connect with me, I'm most active on Instagram, so at O M G underscore it's Aaron. And then also my website, ErinNane.com is where you can find a little more deeper dive into. Um, my journey, my thoughts, and a little bit into my blog. I also share a woman of impact. I did a series on other women who are doing all different things, um, but making an impact in life um, in all different areas. Awesome. I was just going to ask you about the the blog. So I will list that in the description of the podcast, along with your Instagram, ITAN, Centibella, everything there. Um, before we wrap up this episode, was there anything else that you wanted to mention? I just want to remind all my ladies that, you know, you have the power to make it happen, whatever that looks like for you. It doesn't have to be a business. It could be your dream career, dream relationship, dream car, vacation, whatever it looks like, because it's going to be different for everyone. But you have the power to make it happen. It's all within reach. You can do it. um, And really without boundaries, without limits, as you're really echoing um, and just make it happen for yourself. And once you do, that momentum is going to keep you going and it's going to serve as a reminder to you that, 
you can make it happen in life. It is possible. And um, you already have the power within you. So go ahead and do it. I love it. Thank you, Erin. Thank you so much for being here today and sharing your journey. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And for everybody that's listening, thank you so much for tuning into another episode. Don't forget to check out the podcast Patreon page at Limitless Ladies in Leadership to help support the podcast and keep the episodes coming. Uh, We will list all of Erin's descriptions as well as Santabella and ITAN in the description of this podcast. And we will catch you next time.